Tens of thousands of homes are now without power. Millions of people are being told to stay at home as a red weather warning is issued. Roads and train lines have been closed. Sports fixtures across the country are now under threat. With one of the most anticipated matches of the year, the Merseyside derby has now been postponed. I think the weather has got into the... uh, the technicals as well this morning because we were hoping to speak to Joe Thomas who's the Liverpool Echoes Everton correspondent but just as we attempted to go to him his lines dropped off possibly because of Storm Dara which is perfectly understandable we will will try and reconnect and we'll speak to Joe in a moment may well be part of it Um, lots of people uh, reacting to what we've been discussing this morning not least the interview with Jonathan Reynolds Uh, Mike says uh, he's the business uh, secretary of course and Mike has been in touch and says Jonathan Reynolds is deluded I want to know why he thinks the government needs to do to drive growth and if he thinks it's already doing it, it ain't going to work. Uh, and lots of other people uh, as well. Why, why can we treat our older generation well? Then I can get on board with costing the young offenders. Well, let's talk about the travel situation because there's so many people, of course, who are inconvenienced by Storm Dara and uh, there's dozens of flights, ferries, trains being cancelled. Well, no better man to talk us through this than Simon Calder, travel correspondent at The Independent. He's at London Waterloo. Um, let's start with the train, Simon. What's happening? <laughs> Uh, Yeah, good morning. Um, Things looking pretty grim here at uh, London Waterloo. We've got cancellations of trains which normally run down to Exeter. Reports of a fallen tree near uh, on the line to Portsmouth and arrivals generally coming in about um, uh, an hour. Sorry, forgive me, half an hour or so late. That is replicated in an awful lot of places, in particular London Paddington Station, which is the Um, hub for Great Western Railway services to South Wales, to the west of England. Nothing is running west of Cardiff, going towards Swansea and Carmarthen, or indeed west of Plymouth, going to Penzance. And we've also got loads of speed restrictions coming in, for instance, from Bristol to London. Trains typically arriving 45 minutes late, which is triggering lots of other cancellations. Northern says that there's a fallen tree um, east of Liverpool on the line to Warrington. Speed restrictions in place across uh, ScotRail. Um, The line from Aberdeen to Inverness is uh, mostly closed. And wherever you're going, just assume that uh, trains are likely to be disrupted. We're going to see more fallen trees. We may see the old familiar trampolines on the line as well if they get uh, blown from people's back gardens. Uh, Just a quick word on the flights and the ferries as well, Simon, what's happening there? Yeah, so flights are looking really, really messy. Um, The poor passengers coming in from Abu Dhabi to Manchester this morning spent an hour flying around in circles trying to land at Manchester. They are now in Frankfurt in Germany. Uh, They're going to be trying to fly into Manchester a little bit later on. At London Heathrow, we've had 70 cancellations on British Airways alone. Um, Many, many cancellations to and from George Best Belfast City, but also Belfast International. And again, the advice is uh, hope for the best, but be prepared for delays and disruption if you are flying. And the ferries, nothing from Cairn Ryan to either Larne or Belfast in Northern Ireland. And further south, Hollyhead to Dublin and Fishguard to Rosslare and Pembroke, they are not working. Caledonia, McBrain, well, they've cancelled pretty much everything, particularly services to Isla, um, also to Arran and to uh, Lewis this afternoon and evening. For people thinking of venturing out in their cars, Simon, today, what would what is the advice on that? Well, as you've been reporting, the um, the government has actually told people to stay indoors in the the red weather warning area. Uh, the RAC is saying. If you are going out, then avoid coastal roads, avoid uh, rural roads if you can, um, keep your speed down in case of debris, um, and if you can possibly stick to main roads, you will be in better shape. But um, ideally, postpone your trip. But of course, um, uh, the chances of making the journey by rail are not as brilliant as they might be. Simon Calder, the Independence Travel Correspondent, thank you very much indeed for that update affecting just so many people today. Mm. Well, some sports fixtures are also becoming a casualty of Storm Dara. Let's speak to Joe Thomas, who is the Liverpool Echoes Everton Correspondent. Morning, Joe. 
Good morning. Thanks for bearing with me there. No, not a problem at all. I can understand because of the weather. So the Merseyside derby's off. It is, yes. Uh, one of the most significant fixtures in the Premier League calendar is being called off this morning. I think that became increasingly inevitable this morning, to be honest, once we woke up and saw the weather, how it was. There were a lot of high-profile meetings around it yesterday. They, they decided to hold on until this morning just to see if the weather was as bad as predicted. And to be honest, it's, it, that has been the case. It's predicted to get worse. So it, I think it became increasingly likely as people woke up this morning mm. and you could see and hear what was around them. How bad is it as you look out of your window right now? Give us a sense of what it's like. Yeah, well, it's very windy. It's, it, the rain isn't so bad, but it is windy. Like I just listened to Simon Calder there, and I am someone who has gone to rescue a trampoline this morning. Oh, gosh. So, um, <laughs> so it, hadn't, it hadn't quite left my garden, but it, it was on its way out. So I, I was tethering that down whilst waiting for updates from Everton and Merseyside police about the match. So that probably gives you a little bit of a picture as to how it is around here on Merseyside. Gosh, I mean, I suppose at least the benefit of it being a Merseyside derby is people aren't generally travelling that far or most of the fans aren't travelling that far. So I guess it's easier for them to call it off now. But it is an emotional day or it was an emotional day because it was meant to be the last Merseyside derby at Goodison Park. Yeah, of course, it was a game of huge significance, huge poignance, really, and not just for fans of Liverpool and Everton, but probably for you know, for, for the wider footballing world as well. Goodison Park is one of the most storied stadiums in probably in world sport, not just in football itself. Uh, it's on its way for a, you know, a memorable farewell season with the club moving to the waterfront, brand new stadium next season. And this was, barring any surprises in, in the FA Cup, next year. This is going to be the last time that Liverpool came to Goodison. That was going to be a very emotional occasion. The build-up to that has been incredibly you know, poignant and there's so many memories from so many players and fans going into this game. It was, it's, it's set to be a special occasion, um, but obviously that's called off now. Although there probably will be some Everton fans, I think, will actually be a little bit satisfied that it is. One, because Everton are in a, a bad run of form at the minute, albeit they won it the other day, but two, Goodison is at its most special, its most vibrant, its most hostile at night games. And there was a lot of disappointment that this game wasn't going to be a night game when the fixtures came out. But now it is almost inevitable that it, it will be. So there'll be some a little tinge of satisfaction from that, I think, uh, to, to rescue from today. That's what I was going to ask you, because they will still play at Goodison Park, won't they? Because they're going to have to play this Premier League fixture before the end of the season. So do we have any idea, have they got space particularly set aside for, for rearranged matches? Do we have a sense of when that will be? It'll probably be next year now. Um, yeah. There aren't very many spaces left in the footballing calendar. That's largely well, particularly with Liverpool cup... doing so well. I mean, what can I that's say? It. <laughs> that's largely with the cup competitions and with, with Liverpool playing in midweek with their European football commitments and, and domestic cups as well. So there's only a handful of weeks next season. There is, there is, and this is dependent on how well Liverpool do in some of those trophies, there is actually the potential for this to end up being a game that is, is in the last week of the season. It could potentially end up being Goodison's last ever game. Gosh, and of course it's got a bit of extra bite this at the moment. I mean, you talk not only about Everton with not a great run of form. I mean, Liverpool so far ahead at the top of the Premier League as well. It would have been good to see it today. It really would be. And, and, and the Goodison derby, yeah, it is a great level. Everton won in similar circumstances earlier on in this year when they were huge underdogs. Uh, and there was hope that they could pull off something similar today. Really good to speak to you, Joe. Sorry to hear that it's been cancelled, but thanks for speaking to us this morning. It's Joe Thomas, who is Liverpool Echo's Everton correspondent. So just to reiterate, the Merseyside derby, which was due to kick off at 12.30, um, is now been postponed because of Storm Dara.